Hi, this is Jose Luis and welcome to another geometry gem. What we're going to do in this gem is we're going to extend the work that we did on the previous one where I taught you how to implement Chaikin's algorithm to create a smooth polyline between uh, the points of a controlled polygon. For this one, uh, instead of using the points as the contour polygon, what we're going to do is we're going to use those points as the interpolation points through which we want the curve to go through. So the curve that we're going to generate using Chaikin's algorithm is going to actually pass through those points. And this is going to be a very useful algorithm for things such as motion planning, robotics, because typically what you have is the target points that you want to go through, and then you need to create a trajectory through them. Now, you're going to see very soon that this problem is simply very in a very abstract way it's just reduced to figuring out from the initial points that we have the interpolation points figuring out which is the control polygon that we need to generate to um, to be able that we need to generate from those interpolation points to be able to apply chicken algorithm to that control polygon and um, and we're going to solve this in two ways first of all uh, for the reasons that I will explain, we need to add an additional constraint, which is we need to add a tangent vector uh, to the starting point or the end point so that we can positively generate this control polygon. And then we're going to apply a second step, which is going to be applying genetic optimization to figure out uh, from all the possible initial tangent points, tangent vectors, which might be the one that gives us a curve that is the most fit to those interpolation points, aka the one that has like the least crazy curves or that overall has the shortest length. Um, we're going to be implementing this in C sharp uh, within Grasshopper, which is a visual programming environment for 3D modeling. Uh, but all the code that we're going to be using is purely C sharp with almost no um, geometry kernels from Grasshopper. And we're going to be using a lot of the functions that we have used in previous gems. Um, so this is going to be super, super interesting and a lot of fun. Uh, just like, for example, moving the tangent and seeing how the whole curve adapts, right? Um, so stay tuned. And it's also a very easy algorithm to implement. Um, so stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. All right. So before we get into the weeds of writing the algorithm, let's do as we usually do and spend like a little bit of time thinking about what we're going to do. Uh, the premise of this problem is we know Chaikin's algorithm and we know that given a control polygon, it's very easy to find a smooth polygon, a smooth curve between those um, with the um, with Chaikin's algorithm, right? However, the premise of this problem is instead of starting from uh, the control polygon, which somehow is something that is a little bit abstract. What we want to start is with a set of points like this one. Um, and what we want these points to be is we want this to be the points through which the curve goes through. Uh, we're going to call this the interpolation points because it's a really common term uh, to define points that define a curve. But through which the curve actually goes through. Um, if we were to imagine these points as the interpolation points of a curve, the curve could probably look something like this. It's a curve that like with its curve, it tries to adapt to uh, the overall shape of those points at the same time as going through them. Um, if we think of this this way, and if we think that somehow we want to use those points um, to use Chaikin's algorithm to define a smooth curve through them, then the problem is actually quite easy. The problem becomes given a set of points that we're going to define as the interpolation points, can we generate the control polygon that corresponds to those points so that if we apply Chaikin's algorithm to that control polygon, uh, we would obtain that curve? And as we know, we've already discussed that control polygons, we don't really care about the polygon itself. What we care is about the points that define that control polygon. So the problem that we're trying to, we're going to try to solve today is given a set of interpolation points uh, for a curve, so the red ones here in the diagram, can we find a set of control polygon points, 
So the green ones, this one here, right here, right here, <laughs> the green ones um, that form a contour polygon so that the curve generated through Chaikin's algorithm and that contour polygon goes through the original set of interpolated, interpolated, um, interpolated points, the red ones here. That's going to be the problem. Given interpolation points, can we generate control points and then obtain a curve that goes through the interpolated points using Chaikin's algorithm? Um, as you're going to see very soon, the problem is actually super, super easy to do. Uh, but there's only one catch. The catch is that as far as I am concerned, as far as I know, and you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong on the comments or shoot me an email and I'll take the video down or, or whatever. Uh, as far as I know, this problem is not a, doesn't have a closed form solution. What that means is that there is no one way to, sorry, let me say that again. There are infinite ways or there are infinite sets of um, green points, of control points that satisfy the condition of creating a control polygon that goes through the um, interpolated points and then creates a curve. Um, and you can think of it, um, imagine if I were to take this point, uh, I'm going to drag it, I'm going to, and imagine if I were to move it around, right? If I were to move this point around, you could imagine how we could adapt always the control polygon to, um, to uh, generate points that are still going through uh, those interpolation points. Uh, just because there is one degree of freedom that is unconstrained in this problem. So what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to do two things in this gem. We're going to first solve it if we add an additional constraint to the problem. And that constraint is going to be adding as an additional constraint, adding the tangency that we want, that we desire to the first point of the curve. So we're going to start with the interpolation points but we're going to add another input parameter, which is going to be the tangency of that point, AKA, let me just draw that here, like an arrow like this, defining um, what is the tangency that the curve is going to have at the beginning of, um, at the beginning of itself. That's going to be one's constraint. The second part of this video is going to be, what if we didn't have a constraint? What if we wanted from the infinite pool of solutions, from the infinite pool of control polygons that we can form for the original interpolated points? What if we wanted to choose one solution that satisfies some kind of criteria? Um, this is going to be an optimization problem and I'm going to be using Galapagos and the criteria is going to be something very simple. So for example, um, let's say we want to find the smoothest um, curve between those interpolation points. Probably uh, that curve is going to be the one that corresponds to the control polygon that has the longest average length. Uh, and you can imagine that if I were, for example, to create um, this other polygon, so uh, am I drawing here? Uh, why am I? Okay. So if I were to, from these red points, if I was to create, why am I not drawing? Uh, this point, this point, this point, this could also be a control polygon for the, for the same red points that I have here. But you can see that the overall length, length of this polygon is much larger and it's going to give me some weird, some weird curvature like this, some weird curve like this. So I don't think this is what we want, right? So we're going to implement, um, an optimization looking for a control polygon that is going to be um, uh, the shortest length as possible. There are other ways to do this. For example, you could try to compute the angles of all the segments of the polygon and try to find the polygon that has the, the average wider angle. And that would create also like very smooth curvature between those angles. There's a bunch of things that can be done. Okay. So, um, but let's focus back on the problem. Okay, but then let me explain how the, the first part of the video, the first implementation is going to work. Given the set of um, interpolation points, the red ones, um, what we will need, and given 
an additional constraint, which is going to be that vector, the tangency vector, what we need to find is we need to find um, the green points, so the point, the, con the control polygon points that define um, this boundary, this control polygon that we're going to use to apply Chekin's algorithm. Uh, and the problem is going to be super simple. Imagine we don't have the curve, we don't have anything, um, and what we have is this as an input. We have the interpolation points and the um, and the um, and the tangency vector. Uh, it's very it's very easy to see that um, what we can do to find the control points of the control polygon is first of all we can start by saying I have the first point and I have the tangency so what I can do is that the first point of the control polygon is going to be taking this point and then moving it by the vector so that it ends up being this point here so this is going to be the first point of the control polygon. And because of the rules of Chekin's algorithm, we also know that uh, for every segment of the control polygon, this point, the interpolation point, is always going to lay at the center of the uh, control polygon. Which means that if I take, if I make a line from this point all the way here and I keep that distance going on and I double that distance, then I, that's how I can find the first point, the second point of the control polygon. And then if I keep doing that again recursively, so now I'm going to calculate this distance and do like and double that, that I can find, then I can find the second control polygon. Then I'm going to do this again, double the distance. That's how I can find the third control point and then and then the last control point. And that's it. Literally, that's it. It's super simple. We just take uh, the first point, we move it by the vector. That's how we find the first point of the control polygon. And then we start for each one of the interpolation points. We find which one this is, this is, this is, and this is, by just taking the previous point and then finding a point, and this is going to be the aha moment, finding a point along this line here, which we know, which lays at two times the relative distance between this point and this point. And for that, we're going to use a geometry gem that we have used before in the past, which is calculating the relative distance of a point between two other points. And remember that that was a value between 0 and 1, but now instead of sticking to 0 and 1, we're going to stick, we're going to move that farther to 2, so that we find the point that is like at double the length between those two. All right, it's going to be super, super easy. Um, let's get hands on. Let's go back to the code. So if you remember from the previous gem, um, where we did Chaikin's algorithm from a control polygon, uh, we implemented something like this, we had our points, that were part of a control polygon, we could move them around, and then we could control how many iterations or how smooth this simplified curve is. We could also control uh, the proportion. I remember that the original control polygon for Chekin's algorithm, the proportion is 0 0.5, 0 0.0, 0 0.25, and we also could, could control whether if the curve was closed or not. All right, okay. And um, in the previous video, in the previous gem, we had a lot of the code happening here in the main function in the C sharp script, I have taken that and I have abstracted that into a function that is called Chaikin polyline smoothing from control, po control points. Okay, um, and I've done this because I want to make this different from what we're going to do today, which is Chaikin polyline smoothing from interpolation points, for example. But what I've done is from the previous video, I've just basically created this function and I have taken and copy pasted all this code and then return as part of the function, return the control points that we generated inside of the function. So that now the C sharp script is like a very clean one. It's just the output is going to be the result of this function that we generate and that also has the exact same inputs as the component itself. 
the uh, inputs of the functions are the points, the control points, how many iterations, the proportion of the algorithm, and whether if the curve is periodic or not. Um, we're going to use this as the starting point. So we're going to use this code as a starting point for today's gem, because what we're going to do is we're just going to add to this process a previous step where we take all the interpolation points, we recreate a new control polygon, and then we applied this very same Jenkins algorithm that we did before. Okay, so let me rewrite the file a little bit so that we are um, ready to implement that in a second. Great. Let me ex let me explain what I've done. I have just created like a new group of points, right? Um, remember that this will be interpolation points. So whenever we finish with the exercise, probably I'm going to take I'm going to drop an interpolate. Probably the result will look something like this. It will look like a curve that is going through all those points. But instead of being like a nice smooth NURBS curve like I just did here, it will be uh, a collection of uh, of points. So it will be like a polyline with very small segments. Um, and what I've done is I have maintained the component that we had before. The only thing that I have added is this new input, which is the tangent vector at the beginning of the at the beginning of the of the um, at the beginning of the um, of the control of the interpolated points. And actually, um, I think it would be a good idea to visualize this. So let me, for example, let me list item, let me just drop here a visualization vector. So this is here, I want to see vector, right? So what is the point, the point is going to be uh, the first point on the list. And then the vector is going to be this one. So you can see that the vector is a tiny ridiculous vector, let's do like a nicer, like a bigger um, uh, and let, let, let's point down probably and a little bit negative and maybe upwards. Yes, so let, let, let's, that, let's make that the vector that we want to um, use as the tangency. Okay. Um, yeah, this could be like a nice thing to have as, as visualization in the, in the, on the side. So um, we have added this vector as input to our component. And we have added a new input called tangent, which remember, we need to right click on the input, go to type hint, and we need to specify that this has to be a vector 3D object. Okay. And then as we click here, we can see that now our main function has all the inputs. it has the interpolation points, the tangent vector, how many iterations do we want to do? whether the properties 0 0.25, etc. And whether if the curve is periodic or not, because all of those are still going to be the same, we're still using Chaikin's algorithm. Um, so now, now that we have the component ready, the only thing that we need to do is we need to write two things, we need to write first, something that takes all these, um, all these interpolation points, and the tangent vector and generates a control polygon, and then taking that contract polygon, applying Chaikin's algorithm, and then we're done. All right. So that's going to be very easy. Let's take a look at how to do that. Cool. Let's start by the beginning. The first thing that we're going to do, remember, we're going to take the interpolation points and the vector, and we're going to find the control polygon that corresponds to that. So we can probably do that with a function. So we can create a function that given these inputs returns the control polygon. Um, and let me just do that here. So I'm going to say list, I'm going to say, for example, the function name is going to be control polygon from interpolation points. Um, yeah, I feel like today I'm writing very long function names for some reason. <laughs> the input is going to be first is going to be a list of points. So it's going to be uh, a list of point 3d objects. And then it's going to be a vector 3d object called the tangent, right. And then we need to remember that the return uh, object is going to be it could be a polygon, because Rhino common has polygon objects, but polygons are basically lists ordered list of, of points. So it's much better if we just stick to returning a list of points, because that's actually what we will need to use 
down the road. And here I'm going to add some, um, some um, um, comment. Um, given a list of interpolation points and a and the tangent at the starting point returns the corresponding control polygon as a list of points all right and right now this is going to return this is going to return nothing uh, and here, um, we, at, the, at the main function, we're going to compute the control polygon by saying, let's create a new list of point 3D up. Ugh. <laughs> Why is always the same? <laughs> let's create a new list of point 3D object called, for example, control points. And that's going to be the result of applying this function to the input points, PTS, the ones that are coming from the component, and the tangent vector that is coming from the component as well. Remember that the fact that this and this have the same name has no importance whatsoever. Uh, however, this has to have the same name as this one because it refers to the data that is coming from the component. The same from tangent here. This refers to the vector that is coming inside the component. The fact that this is called the same as this one has nothing to do. This could be called V and this could be called PS. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, if I run this, nothing happens because this function is empty and is returning nothing. And then also we're not returning really anything here. But at least it's not failing because I created the empty scaffoldings of this function, the one that I will be using, I'm filling up with code, and how to call that function. I like doing this a lot when I do software development. I first like create, design what are the inputs going to be, and who's calling whom, and I do it in an empty way, and then I start filling in the gaps. Okay. Now, <clears throat> once here, <clears throat> excuse me, once here, this function we need to fill in with the code that takes interpolation points and returns um, and returns the control polygons. And as we saw before, <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find which is the first point, uh, which is a very simple operation. We will take the coordinates of the first interpolation points and add the coordinates of the vector. And then from there, iteratively, we will start generating these points by finding uh, the point along the length uh, that is double the relative length between those two. So if I go back here, you, let's start by let's start with the beginning. Let's start by creating a empty list of points. So this is going to be empty list of points. Uh, for example, control PTS is going to be a new list that is going to start as empty. Okay. Um, Start an empty list. Now, <clears throat> compute the first point. We can do this in many ways, um, but we know that the, the first point, point 3D start is going to be from the list that is coming for the component is going to be the first one, PTS zero, all right? Um, and then this point, if we, if we add to these coordinates, if we add to the coordinates of x, we add the x vector of tangent, all right, then we have basically moved that original point by the by the x component of the tangency. If we copy and paste this, and we do this for y and for z, right, um, oops, and for c, we now have the first point that has been moved by the coordinates of um, by the coordinates of um, of the vector. In Rhino, you, we could have done the same thing by just saying start is going to be point zero plus the tangent, and then we would not have needed to use this. But if you're in an environment that doesn't have points of vectors uh, or our vector algebra like this one, then this is basically just the same, but in a more verbose way. And now that we have the first point, then to control points, 
we can just add this first point, the starting point that we just generated. Okay, as simple as that. Is that clear? And now, uh, as we said before, we're going to write a, an iterative loop where for each one of the segments or for each one of the in interpolation points, we're going to take the last point that we have generated and we're going to find the point along the line between the last point and the interpolation point at double the relative distance. And we're going to add that to the list. So how could we write that? We can write that in, in a couple different ways. Um, we can write, we can start with a for loop, for example, uh, int i equals zero, i is less than the amount of points in, uh, that are coming in, uh, the control points. And then what we can say here is, for example, we can say, let's first find which one is the last point that we have already computed. So we can say the previous point is going to be equal to uh, from the list of control points, right? From the ones that we are already um, creating, take the last one. And the last one is the one that's going to be at position, at position count minus one. So if there are, if the list has already three um, points, the last one is the one that is at position three minus one equals two. So we take, we find out which one is the previous one. And then now what we find, what we now take is we say, let's find which one it's, which point is the interpolated point that we want to take a look at right now. And because we are uh, using a for loop, this is going to be from the points that we are looking at. Uh, so PTS is going to be one at a time. So that's going to be point equal I. Um, as I am doing this, I just realized that very likely this is going to be the same as I. So this, let me just substitute this um, because if this is the first point of the inter... Uh, yes, if this is... Uh, if we're taking a look at the first point of the interpolation points, this is probably also the first point of the list. If we're taking a look at the second point of the interpolation points, then the previous point is also the second one um, of the previous list. So those two are probably going to match, okay? And then once we are there, then what we need to do is we need to say, well, um, find the point that is at double the distance between the previous point and the interpolation point. Find, if I have this point and this point, find the point that is at double the relative distance between this point and this point. If you remember from, um, if you remember from geometry gem number seven, I believe, we did this function called point along the line formed by two points at and at a particular parameter. And this was relative distance. So if we use this function between the two points and the parameter instead of being between zero and one is a parameter two, then it's going to be a point that is going to be two times the distance between A and B. So let's try that. So point 3D uh, new PT is going to be a point along the line formed by the previous point that we have calculated and the interpolated point that we are looking at right now. And it's going to be at a distance of two. And this number two, this cannot be tweaked. We cannot play with this value because if, we, if it's a different value, then the control polygon will not be valid, okay? So, um, and then once we have calculated this new point, we can just say, take control points and add this new point that we just created to the list. All right. And then here compute the, the rest of interpolated, uh, the rest of control points. Mm -hmm. And once we're done with that, then we can just, um, we can just return control points. Okay. Let's see if we get any error. If I click press, uh, we did have an error, name new points that not exist in the current context. 
Okay, yes, yeah, so I wrote new PT as opposed, and here I wrote new PTS. So that was a typo. Uh, okay, and this is working, but we don't have any outcome because like I didn't output anything here. So, um, so I'm going to take this and then I'm going to post it as an output. So the output now here is a bunch of points. So let me visualize those points. So you can see I have just created um, these points here and I'm going to join them with a polyline to see if this is working correctly. So, oops, okay. So I see that from the original points, I am getting a bunch of points that are forming a contour polygon around them. And I see that the, the distance, the double distance rule is working, but something is not working well with the tangency. So this original point should be right here where the vector is ending. So I probably have done something incorrectly here. Let me take a look at what it's done. And let me take a look at what the problem might be. And uh, let me get back to you. Yes, stupid mistake. Uh, this is what happens when you're recording live. Uh, remember when I did the operation here computing the first point, I did a I, I did a mistake, which is what I wanted was to the coordinates of the starting point, I wanted to add the coordinates of the tangent. But instead of that, what I did was I completely replaced them. So whatever the co x coordinate of start was, I now made it equal to the coordinate of the vector. And therefore, it doesn't matter where start was, it just became the x, the tangent vector. So this is just a very simple fix, I should have added the coordinates of the tangent to those points. And then if I hit run, you can see how now the starting point adapts perfectly to the vector, the tangent vector that we have, and how we have created like a really strange, uh, <laughs> we have created a very strange uh, or very like zigzaggy contour polygon around these points. But this is, this is how it works. This is the result of like a, probably like a very elongated tangent vector, right? Um, and now uh, this is just as simple as saying, as using what we already had, Chaikin's algorithm to create, um, to create the smooth, the smooth polygon. So smooth polygon with Chaikin's algorithm. So now we just say, let me create, let me define a list of point 3D objects called smooth poly. And this is going to be the result of Chaikin's polyline smoothing from contour polygons. I'm going to open here and then I need the points for the contour polygon. So that's going to be the points that I just created, contour points. Then the amount of iterations, that is whatever is coming in from the components, so iterations. Then the proportion for the smoothing, so that's going to be whatever is coming in here from the function. And then whether if it's periodic or not. So um, that's also going to be periodic, which is what's coming in from the function. And then as I do that, I'm going to um, inline this so that it's a bit easier to read. Uh, and this should have, uh, and then instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spit out here smooth polyline. All right. And then as I do that, woohoo, it looks like we did get something. Is that true? Does it look like we're going through the control polygon? Um, it does look like we're going to the control polygon. Aha, uh -huh, etc. Yes, and we have yes. And if I change the uh, the vector, so for example, if I make the vector smaller, you can see how the whole the whole curve is adapting, and it's like smoothing in like a little bit. You know, it's not so extreme anymore. Uh huh. How cool is that? Right? I could actually just make put another point here, for example, and then just create a vector that is, um, for example, let me, I'm just going to play around a little bit with this set one point is going to be this point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector between two points, um, a vector between three points, which is going to be a vector between the first point and a vector between 
this other point that I just brought in, and that's what I'm going to plug in here. Um, and that's the vector that I'm going to visualize here, right? And then if I drag this point around, you can see that I can play with the overall smoothness of the curve and the tangency. And if I flip it backwards, then like, uh, you see? All right. So I like this. Um, I'm just going to stick to um, this version though. Um, and here, yes. And all right. Okay, so we have the basis done, uh, which is great. Uh, a couple of things though. First, um, there is a tiny problem here, which is the fact that the curve doesn't really, really exactly finish at the interpolation point, just because of the nature of Chaikin's algorithm. Same here, the starting point of the interpolation is not the same one as the very start one, so we will need to, um, to fix that a little bit. And also, for the sake of housekeeping, like I said before, I would like to, um, instead of having these two main steps on the main C Sharp script, what I would like to is I would like to create a new function uh, called, for example, check in polyline from interpolation points so that I can call that function and that function contains all the code that it needs to run. So, um, and so that it's easier to copy and paste around applications. Uh, imagine we're building our own geometry kernel with a lot of really cool operations. So that would be easier to um, and more portable. So let's do those two things. Let's create a function that is going to be, for example, I'm just going to do it like right now. Uh, uh, let me create a function, for example, that is going to be called um, <clears throat> check in polylines moving from interpolation point, interpolation points. Um, and then this is going to be, this is going to be, oops, what am I doing? Uh, this is going to be using interpolation points and tangent vector as inputs. All right. Also, I need to remember that I need to have an in I need to have here as an input. I need to have a vector three D object, uh, which is going to be the tangent. <clears throat> All right. So my function will take all these parameters. It will basically take all the same parameters that the C sharp component is taking right now. Uh, points, tangents, iterations, etc., etc. Okay. So that's one thing. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move all this code here. All right. I'm just going to move it here. And because I'm using the same names, uh, things should work the same. And now the only thing that I need to remember is to return smooth poly, which is the list of points that we have calculated. The result, hopefully, will be that here, now we can just call chicken polyline smoothing from interpolation points. And I'm going to pass points, I'm going to pass the tangent vector, I'm going to pass iterations, I'm going to pass the proportion, and I'm going to pass whether if it is periodic or not. Um, and this, if I run this, nothing happens because I'm getting the exact same result, right? So now my C sharp script component is very clean. It's just the one function I have created. And that function contains whatever code needs to run. Okay. Um, cool. So that is one thing. The other thing is that I need to remember to fix the two points to fix the two, um, the two ends. So what I need to do is from the smooth polyline, I need to remove the start and the end points. And I need to substitute that with the first point in PTS, and the last point on PTS as well. So um, replace, replace starting point. So um, from <clears throat> from smooth poly, I'm going to remove at zero. All right, and if I do that, you will see that this point disappears. And now what I need to do is to smooth poly. Uh, I need to add, add, um, wait, 
is this what I need to do? Um, hold, hold on, I need, to, I need to look up how this works. Yes, sorry, it wasn't add, add, it was insert. That's what I was missing. And then insert takes the first argument, takes the position at which you want to insert an element, that's going to be position zero, and then the element that you want to insert at that position. That's going to be uh, from the original points, the original interpolation points, that's going to be PTS zero. And let's see if this works. If I do this, this new point has shown up there. So that's good. And then I'm going to replace endpoint. So that's going to be from smooth poly. Let's remove the point that is at however many points are the last one. So smooth poly count minus one. Let's is that going to work? Uh, if I hit run now, yes, it did remove the last one and then smooth poly. And for this one, we can just use add because it needs to be just um, add always adds to the last position of the list. For this one, we're going to take the last point of the list PTS. So that's going to be PTS, uh, PTS dot count minus one. And if I do that and I run this code, yes, we generate another point and then the polyline ends right at that point. Okay, so it looks like we have fixed the problem. Um, and um, it looks like we have fixed the problem. So now the smooth polyline passes through all the interpolation points and starts and ends exactly at the endpoints. So that's great. However, I want to add a tiny bit thing more. This component right now is calculating internally, is calculating the control polygon of Chaikin's curve, but it's not outputting it. It's not giving it to me. So if I wanted to visualize the relation between the control polygon and this curve that I just generated, I don't have that possibility because the component is not giving it to me. So something that we can do is in this function, because in the function, we are calculating the control points, actually, we could also return that to whoever is calling the, the function. Um, <clears throat> so we could create like another return, it's not going to be exactly that, so that when we output the component, we output both the points that we're interested in, so the polyline, but at the same time, we also output the control polygon just for the sake of visualization. Okay, okay. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use a technique uh, that is uh, part of C sharp, which is the fact that instead of using the main return object, which is going to be a list of point 3ds, what we're going to do is we're going to add to the function, we're going to add this reference object that we can use to output additional information to that. Um, so what we're going to do is um, here in the output, we're going to say, I want to reference an output object that is going to be control points, for example, or control PTS. All right. And then this is going to be of the type list point 3D, which means that if whoever calls this function passes as the last argument, an empty point 3D, then the function is going to fill in that list of point 3Ds with the control polygons, which is going to be here. Here, we're going to say control PTS, those that are coming, this argument that we just passed in is going to be equal to all those points that are just generated. Is this going to work? It is not going to work because, um, because no overload just takes five arguments, which means that we are not calling this properly with, we're not passing it a fifth argument here. So what we're going to do is beforehand, uh, create empty list for control points. And that's going to be um, a list 3D of control points, which is going to be empty, we don't even need to initialize it. And then here, I'm going to say control points. 
Is that correct? Um, unassigned, use of an assigned local variable. Um, okay, I'm having some problems. Let me see what's going on. Yeah, um, small detail, I use ref here um, as the, the, the keyword to pass the, to pass the list to the function as a reference. But I actually, there's a slight difference between using ref and using out. Um, I think there are like differences about whether if one is passed by value or by reference. I'm not going to get into those right now. I'll probably get to those in the learning how to see, how to write C-sharp uh, function uh, playlist. But um, uh, sufficient to say that I think out is going to be better in this case, uh, just because it's more designed to output information from the function as a side object. So um, I'm going to do that. And then you can see that I hit run and now the component is working and this is working as well, but I'm not seeing the uh, control polygon yet just because I don't really have a, an output here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, rename this uh, polyline, one, that's one going to be one thing. And I'm going to add another output here called control polygon. Control polyline, for example. And that's going to be the one that I'm going to use to output um, those points. So here I'm going to say polyline is going to be the result of this, but also control polyline is going to be equal to all these points. And as I do that, uh, it doesn't work uh, because I had a typo polyline. Uh, and then but now this should work. And then if I attach a similar thing here, I should be able to see that control polygon formed by this the control polygon that I use in the calculations. Okay. All right. So it looks like our algorithm is complete. Okay. So it looks like now we can, um, from a set of interpolated points, I can just, um, I can just, um, where are the points? I can just um, create like a smooth curve between them, um, which is kind of nice. And starting with the tangency as an input. Okay. Um, so this is done. Um, now, as, a, as an Easter egg or, or as an extra trick, let's see how we could apply Galapagos or how we could apply optimization to find, for example, um, the tangent that generates the control polygon that has the shortest length overall so that we get like the smoothest curve or the simplest curve that we can find across these um, interpolation points. Let's take a look at that. If you're familiar with the Galapagos, you know that Galapagos is, um, is a heuristic optimizer, which what it does is given a fitness criteria. So for example, a value that needs to be maximized or a value that needs to be minimized and given what the genome is. So what are the parameters that we can explore the values that we can tweak to find the most optimal solution for that fitness criteria, then what Galapagos does is this iterative process where it starts searching all the parameter space for those given parameters and tries to find which one of the solutions, just by trying a, lo a lot of times, which one of those solutions is the minimum or the maximum. So in our case, what we want to optimize is we want to make the length, the overall length of this polyline as small as possible because we think that that's probably going to give us like a smoother curve or like a smaller one, right? So for that, let me just calculate the length of a curve and there is a grasshopper component that can give you that. Uh, we could also do this manually. Um, this is going to be the fitness. So this is going to be what I want to minimize. And then the genome is going to be the, the vector. It's going to be the three is going to be the three components of the tangent vector so that given those three components, we want Galapagos to explore which is the vector that will give us the shortest um, polyline. And then as simple as double clicking here, choosing that the fitness criteria that we want is that we want to minimize. All right. Um, I want to see which, what is a good view 
to make this happen, uh, to see this evolve over time. So probably this one here, maybe. No, this is a terrible one. This is a very strange curve I created. <laughs> okay, let's. what about this one? Let's try this view here. And then as we go to solvers here, we just press start solver. And then we're going to see how Galapagos is going to try to uh, play with the values of the tangency. And you see how it's finding tangents that are making the curve a bit closer, a bit more like wrapped within itself, right? So this is probably um, one of the smoother curves that we can find across this interpolated, this interpolation points. I'm going to stop this here. Um, okay, and uh, that's probably, huh? Okay, that's a good one. Let me let me do an example where we see if we can find. So let me let's try with a very simple example. Let's try uh, points that are like almost like aligned with each other. So what we would expect is that the tangency vector. So for example, this one. Um, so this is going to be this point, sorry, multiple points. So this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. So those are going to be those points. And if you see, um, we just created a bunch of points. And because the tangency is pointing downwards, we can see that the curve that is generated is this like weird snake kind of um, kind of um, but if I now run the solver, what will probably happen is that the solver will converge into a vector that is pointing this way, and probably very short or very long, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, so let's see if that works. Am I solving? No. So, so you see how it's playing with the values. And now it's convert, you see, it's converging into something, but it's probably going to start going shorter and shorter, just because you can see that we are still doing the zigzagging, but we're just doing it back and forth <laughs> along the x direction. So we can see how it's converging here. Oh, you see, now it's finding a better solution. And it's still going down in the values. And it can probably do better. That's probably as good as it gets because we can see that uh, the vector is almost as close as zero is close to zero. So I'm going to stop the solver. And we can see that the values that it has found is a vector that is almost zero, which corresponds to this like slightly wiggly curve, right? Uh, which is kind of what we would expect. So I think that the solution is working pretty well. Um, so um, I think that's it for today. Um, Chaikin algorithm, Chaikin's algorithm from interpolation points. This is a really useful algorithm uh, for path planning, robotics, and like uh, many other things. Um, and we found a way to optimize this algorithm to give us um, like the shortest or the most um, the most fit curve to those um, to those um, interpolation points. Thank you very much for being here. Um, if you like this video, please like the video and subscribe and hit the bell button and stay tuned for more live streams, computational design, exercises, geometry jams, algorithmic modeling and all these goodies that we like to discuss to discuss here at Parametric Camp um, uh, on the topics of computational design. Thank you very much and see you on the next one.